Hey everybody, I'm here with Zach Lujazia. We're talking about some rollerblade reflections. What was it like growing up skating, living in the Midwest, especially in a small town? Um, what impact has skating left on you? So we'll get into all of it, but Zach, you want to just introduce yourself, uh, who you are and all that? Hi, I'm Zach Lujazia and I'm one of the OG Ohio Rollerbladers 1911 skate crew. Yeah. Yep, that's right. And you, uh, you were founder of Prosperity, right? You were like our go-to on the camera and on the video editing and like anything that had to do with anything technology. Um, you were, yeah, you kind of helped kick a lot of it off. Yeah, so, that stuff was super interesting from the beginning. Like, I almost cared more about like the video production and, and all that stuff just as much as I did skating. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's really a part of it, you know, like I was out today um, skating and my face got sunburnt, but um, other than that, like, you know, I've been messing around um, using my iPhone and today I actually took out like this eight millimeter fisheye lens my wife has and was messing around with that. Like the video is almost just as important as, as the skating itself is now. Right. I, mean, I think that was like a, such a big part of why we were skating was, is we got into like making our sections and filming clips and and there was so much that went into you know the the persona and the the style that we had you know it was from like the way we dressed and the music we chose and uh the spots we skated and all that stuff so i mean it was it, it in itself was like such a big artistic effort mm -hmm. and i didn't realize it at the time it took me much longer to realize how much like creative direction we gave ourselves and and how much we analyzed other people for their creative choices and <laughs> yeah I mean, that it's such that's what made it so cool I mean we always talked about the individual factor and how everyone was so unique and you know people talk about how you can tell who a skater is just by their silhouette you don't even have mm -hmm. to see who they are mm -hmm. and that's I don't know that was always super interesting and and I think you know that that individual creativity is always what was so fun about skating yeah i'll never forget um the dustin latimer shane coburn talk at the end of brain for gone and um i remember i don't know if you remember when you travis and i tried to recreate that conversation and just had a, a camera and we just covered the oh, lens up in my basement that. yeah totally forgot <laughs> i uh, wish i still had that tape somewhere i know it's um, probably so silly <laughs> yeah i'm sure but all of it begs the question of how did you get into skating in the first place? Um, I don't know. I guess it was through the fairgrounds and you guys, um, you know, I, I don't know who first mentioned it. I know I bought rollerblades. Uh, I tried it at like a cousin's house and I thought it was really cool. And then I ended up buying like just, you know, recreational plastic, you know, mm -hmm. super cheap pair that and I remember skating around my kitchen yeah. <laughs> in my house. Um, so I kind of knew how to skate and then, um, uh, yeah. And then the fairgrounds, that whole skate park set up, whoever got me into it, I would just kind of assume it was you and Travis. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's how I got really into it. Yeah. I, the way I recall, and Travis and I were talking about this is I remember Travis having skates and like getting into it. I think he had come back from California or something and like he saw that it yeah. was cool and I have like same as like you just said just cheap like um can't I don't even remember what they were they weren't aggressive skates by any means they were like purple and pink skates I think they were girl skates but <laughs> I, think I had them um and then yeah I like I remember Travis and like Nick Snelling who you know got into skateboarding I remember them setting up the fairgrounds really, and then everyone else just kind of tagging along with those with Travis and Nick really. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I remember Nick and Travis being some of the first people that were into it. Yeah. Nick was really good too. I forgot. Yeah, we like this. Well, we like even that was like kind of our first creative endeavor. If you think about skating with building that skate park at the fairgrounds out of like scrap wood and junk thrown around the fairgrounds we made like literally a, a <laughs> diy skate park there it was pretty great i mean we had such you know primitive materials to use but we had like a whole course you could go up and come back you know go over the spine and 
the launch ramp and the the yellow like guardrail. Yeah. It was super fast. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> crazy. Sliding out on that. Trying yeah. Royales and just eating it. <laughs> yeah. I I remember, you know, Travis got the squash, uh the rollerblade squashes. And those yeah. were and everyone else had like um the cheaper you know, kind of outdated aggressive skates at that time. They had like a grind plate, but they were not like, you know, um, and I just remember yeah, being so jealous of everybody that had like grind plates and all that stuff. Yeah, that's, it seemed like that was all that was important with skates. So my mm-hmm. first skates that I bought, the aggressive skates were the roller balls mm-hmm. that I got from a JCPenney catalog or something like oh. where they would have skates in the back. And I saw that it had grind plates and an H block and then it like I was always kind of drawn to whatever was like different and unique. I always wanted to find like something that had like its competitive advantage over something else. Yeah. And I saw these giant wheels and I'm like, that's gotta be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then I remember those skates were like so stiff. They were like thirty pounds each. <laughs> yeah. That's what I remember is they were heavy. Dang. Like just picking them up. Yeah, and, like, it's hard to find the one that I bought. I've seen some rollerballs. I've looked at them. But, like, I only see the the shadow style where it has just the two. Mine had, I think it was eight. <laughs> I think it was all four on both skates. It's the heaviest skate ever. <laughs> yeah. I'm, um, I think I remember, didn't Antoine in school have a pair of rollerballs? I think I remember, like, seeing yeah. him with them. I don't remember anyone having them besides me. I thought I was the only buyer they had. <laughs> yeah. yeah but you know i were at that time i think heavy skates were like a thing because like oxygens were like super heavy too like i never yeah. owned a pair but i remember seeing them at the skate park and like a guy let me try on a pair and they were like tanks <laughs> like ridiculous. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember how much those skates were but i remember there was no way i was affording the oxygens that were at i saw at the dayton mall skates and more right next to mm-hmm. funko land <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, oxygens and stuff were super popular at the time. But yeah, that was, man, that was so long ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like you said, you were kind of like one of the original skaters. Um, you, I mean, you know, there was us, um, Travis, you, me, but then, of course, like John Cropper rollerbladed for a little, bo- a little while before I got into skateboarding. Nick Snelling, Brian Ford, Jeff Rubel. Um, I think that was it. And like us three kind of stuck with rollerblading. Um, and you saw everybody come from, you know, Tyler Grove starting to Garrett and Parker starting, Josh Metz coming to the scene, like, you know, yeah. to expanding out and Zane and Dustin and Matt and Ben. Um, what, what do you remember the most about slowly meeting everybody or anyone stick out that uh, as a first impression? Um. I wouldn't say individually, but I, I, my memories of everything are like, I have these um, kind of like segmented, you know, portions of my rollerblading life. So there was like the fairgrounds era. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> and after the, the fairgrounds was kind of like the Wilmington street era yeah. <laughs> where it was just all around everywhere we could skate to essentially. So we weren't driving then. Then driving kind of became a thing. And I don't know, I guess from there it was kind of, um just it seemed like it was mostly Dayton yeah. you know and we started our crew started to expand then then it was kind of like Ohio or southern Ohio I guess we didn't really go much northern but Columbus Cincinnati Dayton we were all around then there was the move to California and the whole California era and you know so in each one of those kind of segments of my life I have some pretty distinct memories but they're all like it, they do kind of have like a start and a stop to each of them and like it's weird just the the compartmentalizing I can do of like the different te- uh, segments of rollerblading and the different memories that it evokes and like some super playful like the earlier Wilmington days it's just was just fun and kind of goofy and silly then it like you know skating got more serious in some of the later times and, but yeah I remember our crew and in, in Wilmington and and meeting like uh you had like the out of town like zane <laughs> yeah. who would show up every once in a while it was like the guest star in a sitcom or something yeah <laughs> every once in a while zane would be in town and show up at the spot and, mm-hmm. yeah yeah 
Uh, any um, really distinct memory, skating memories that stick out that just like, whenever you think about it, come to mind? Um, the Wilmington College, for some reason, just seemed like we were there all the time. Um, so like, maybe not a specific memory there, but overall just being at the college and it's like our first run-ins with security and, and you know, I have, I have, have some pretty good memories being there. And I feel like those were the first handrails that we had attempted. And the first rail I ever did was that tiny little down rail, like down the stairs, kind of in that sunken section of the college. Yep. I had like a little drop on the side of it. It was a drop rail. We yeah. had my first rail, drop rail. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like a five stair, six stair, something yeah. like that. Yeah. I remember uh, it's a, on a clip somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know, those are good memories. Yeah. Um, um, CCYC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, CCYC. The do it, another do-it-yourself official park, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's randomly thrown together. And actually, like, I don't know, like your house and our, our play rails that we built and boxes and setting up lights at night. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I think <laughs> Matt's rail, especially yeah. skating at Matt's driveway. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was, that's really strong in my memory of how much I feel like we did that for hours on end. Yeah. I, I remember, and tell me if I'm remembering this wrong, but I like, it seems to me as I think it back about it, like we would go out, we'd skate. Um, and we'd like, especially staying at Matt's house, you know, we were in high school. Um, but I remember like, we'd skate all day, go to Matt's house, like maybe rest, like eat some food. Um, and then like watch some videos, go out in his driveway and like skate. I remember skating to like one o'clock in the morning and then we'd get up and go to school and like yeah. just do it again. You know? yeah. as, as long as we could keep our eyes open, we were <laughs> skating. Yeah. And then, yeah. Like it's funny thinking back now because like, I don't know how this still boggles my mind. I'd spend like 12 hours a day doing cardio and I was still overweight as a kid. I'm like, how? <laughs> how is that possible? Man, I, I've been 12 hours of cardio. <laughs> yeah. I'm skating now and I don't feel like I'm losing any weight from it at all. <laughs> so I, just, I don't know. Maybe it's more working the wrong muscles. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what, what is it the Mountain Dew? Is it Matt's? Uh, like cheese snacks or whatever <laughs> yeah i just remember i love going to matt's house because like he always had pizza rolls or pizza bagels and fruit roll-ups and i was like matt's hey. house was like the food like haven like his parents bought like stuff that none of our other parents bought like the individual sized everything Yep. like any snack full-size candy bars and uh, i guess this is answering my prior question but <laughs> we just had like so much, everything was like cheese based. <laughs> everything was orange. I remember like I was reading a meme the other day and it was saying like, name something funny that like you thought meant people were rich. And like, I thought people were rich based on the snacks they, they had. Like if they had pizza rolls and like pizza bagels and fruit roll ups, like I was like, they're made, they're rich. Like <laughs> Not just the snacks they had, but like, Matt's mom would put these snacks out on display, like, please eat them. Yeah. As many yeah. as you wanted. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy that um, our parents, you know, weren't, like, really overall were pretty supportive just in the fact that, like, there'd be mobs of us that would just show up at Matt's house or my house or your house or Travis. Like, you know, we'd eat all the food. We'd, like, you know, go swimming at Travis's, you know, just come in, like, destroy mm-hmm. things and like go out just crazy stuff um and i can't believe like now that i have the house and i'm older and like whatnot i'm like man i how how am i ever gonna afford to feed an entire neighborhood one day if my girls yeah. like <laughs> honestly like those things never crossed my mind yeah and like no wonder like i don't know i couldn't imagine having just a bunch of sweaty dudes mm-hmm. <laughs> in the house eating everything then like going outside now I live in like a neighborhood where we have like an HOA that you know tells you everything you can and can't do oh. and just having like metal rails and music playing and skating rails outside all night yeah. <laughs> like every night yeah um, 
yeah like it was funny because all of our parents were super supportive remember mike's mom seemed to not enjoy our company as much <laughs> and uh now i totally get it i'm mike's mom like yeah i wouldn't want all you guys yeah yeah back then it was it was like man what's wrong with people but it's like okay there's you know a dozen young teenage guys that have been skating all day sweaty and coming in and eating all the food like we were i could go grocery shopping and like plan to have those groceries for a week and like that stuff we would come in and it'd be gone in a night from us <laughs> so like, <laughs> yeah that's yeah, funny i get it um do you have any like super memorable tricks that you landed skating or any tricks you attempted that just really stick out to you um yeah i think the ones that stink like they they stick in my memory most are the ones that i didn't land yeah. <laughs> um and for me that was uh um the kettering 12 stair yeah. and the there was in dayton right off far hills and like ron road area i think there was a, a seven flat five that i tried to 180 oh, at yeah. night and like for me trying that that double set especially was um that was super scary to, to attempt and i got pretty close i think i tried it twice um but i was you know think back on i wish i would have landed that <laughs> yeah um you know when, when it came to like skating i didn't the people i skated with i didn't feel like i was ever on the same level skill wise and I couldn't jump onto handicap rails very well. But when it came to gaps, I felt like I had a little bit of a, you know, advantage or at least, if, um, you know, I could compete on the same trick level doing gaps and, you know, so gaps were something I, I think I had like a special place in my heart for is cause, uh, I could do gaps on the same level as the people I skated with for a while. Yeah. yeah. Didn't you break your wrist skate? Was it skating or was it something else? Yeah, the surf and skate. All right, yeah. Uh, Travis and I were there. His dad took us up. We were sessioning that park in the back, and it was like right when we were about to leave, of course. We were going to do like one last trick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember I went up, turned around, came up the quarter pipe, and when I came back down the quarter pipe, some kid was like pulling the – rail like across like he was sliding it out of the way or something and it, i just sort of like stumbled over it and flipped and fell backwards and and hmm. broke my wrist and then yeah and then it didn't heal right so then i had to have surgery and they rebroke it so i had another oh. cast for like the same amount of time <laughs> yeah. yeah man that's terrible huh. um <laughs> yeah did you have any um favorite skate spots coming up that you really just love going to yeah the the bob and carl ledges for sure that was like yeah. definitely my favorite um the injury thing just made me think of another trick that i tried um i don't know if you remember this but in centerville i got pulled by ben's car and he got up to like 40 miles an hour and i was jumped from one parking lot over this big long grass gap into like a driveway that was super short and then there was like a curb at the other side and uh i remember i jumped i cleared the gap but then i slid out and i'm wearing shorts while doing it and it just like shredded the whole side of my leg yeah i remember that yeah um so yeah that trick <laughs> is one that stands out in my mind because later on i ended up going to uh have uh, lunch with my grandpa and i was um you know trying to heal the wound and we were at uh red lobster out like in chillicothe or something some town out there <laughs> and uh and it like became inflamed and infected <laughs> and i remember it was like the worst pain it was like someone was holding a lighter to my leg yeah. and my grandpa was like you know he has first of all no idea how i got the injury and I'm trying to explain, I was holding onto a car while on skates and he was like, what, <laughs> why? <laughs> and uh, yeah, he took me to the hospital in Hillsboro. Um, but yeah, that was, that was probably like 
one of the ballsiest tricks I tried. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that came flying back to me. What, what were you asking me? <laughs> oh, I was just, no, I mean, I, that, I was asking if you also had like a favorite skate spot. You said B and C. Um, oh, skate, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any, any curve ledge. Oh, that was such a perfect ledge. Once we got it waxed, like, yeah. And it, what I liked was, I, I don't know, just the way it kind of started low, higher, it slid perfectly, and that perfect length where you could grind the whole thing, you know, yeah. like, and it was a long grind. If it was any longer, then you'd have to come off mid-ledge and it wouldn't be as cool. So, like, the fact that you could, you know, pull a trick the entire curve, and it was just perfect. Yeah. I do. I remember like you would go pretty hard whenever we'd go to the Bob and Carl ledges. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, always we're doing something cool. Like there's, there's a lot of, as I've been watching back through the videos, there's a lot of clips of you um, doing stuff at the Bob and Carl's ledges. Yeah. 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 That was, that was a fun place. And that was just one of those spots where just sort of, you know, fit the, the trick vocabulary that I had. It just matched well. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, skating at it, right side ledge, pretty low to start, curves, keeps you on it, slides good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were your favorite skates you ever skated? Um, uh, Razor's Colt boot, whatever. Um, Mashima ones were probably the, my favorite skates that I got because oh. that was such a big step for me to get, have, like, um, you know, these expensive but, like, legit skates those are i felt like my first real skates that i got um you know those getting the shima ones that day was really cool we went to aggressive skate in blue ash mm -hmm. and uh picked them up there and then and i took them over to garrett's house and i think you guys were already skating and i like showed up feeling so cool having like these new skates to use that yeah. i felt like was just gonna upgrade my entire skating career and yep. I feel like those were definitely like the most comfortable. Then I got like Elliot twos and any, anytime I had the razor Colt skate, I feel like that um, backslide plate and everything just was such a perfect fit for the way I did like a torque and, and stuff. Like I felt very comfortable on those skates. Um, you know, afterwards I got some other skates and it never felt the same. Yeah. It should have stayed with the razor. I think I, I always felt best on those. There's a quite a few clips of you and your Solomons as well. You had those. I had them for a while. They had like a giant grind plate, but I don't know. I didn't. Um, I felt I, I didn't feel as good in them, and it felt harder to do stuff with them yeah. for whatever. But. I just that Colt. That cold boot, like I've been, uh, you know, I've, I've skated a lot of skates here recently and I'm um, just trying to get back into it and nothing, the backslide plate on the Colts is the best by far of the 20 different pairs I've skated. I've done USD, I've done, <laughs> I've got the SL, the SLs now, I tried the Genesis, I tried, you know, I've tried it all. Yeah. I don't know, you just rest down on it and it just had so much control yeah. and then the new razors, I I have gray pal twos right now, and they're like, I don't know. It feels like I'm as much as I try to get on a, a Royale or whatever, I try to get down on the boot. Like, I never. <laughs> it feels like it never touches that back yeah. back side plate. So yeah. like, I never have like that extra support. But yeah, the frames that they make nowadays, today or like nowadays is like also weird. I don't know if you've seen. Like, I bought some Kaiser frames and the the um. You know, I've I've got some old Kaiser frames and they barely have an H block at all. Or like I've got a set of like series one ground control frames and like barely like the H block's huge, but there's barely any groove in it. I bought yeah. these Kaisers and the groove is like so deep and huge. It's almost like a freestyle frame, but it's got four wheels. Like and that's how then I got some new ground control um FL threes and like they're the same way, just I feel like it makes it harder to do tricks with that giant weird H block too. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I know for sure. My favorite frame and H block that I ever had was the ground, the ones that came with the Elliott twos. They were ground controls, but they were the low profile H block, and yep. it was like 
by far the best. Yeah. You know, every other frame never felt as good as that one did. Um, you know, I, even even the ground controls, standard size H block or whatever. I, I never could find those low profile ones after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't, I've not seen them. Um, I've looked. I've got the original ground control ones, but I can't find the the low profile H block. Um, and then I switched to Kaiser frames. I love those Kaiser frames. Um, I got a pair of like the old ones. I, I haven't used them because like I don't want to use them. <laughs> like, the one old like across. Yeah. Like big, like uh, two two colored ones, whatever. Yep. They say Kaisers in silver and like black. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I had I those. <laughs> yep. um, what was your favorite skate video coming up? Um, all the mind game videos for sure. Um, I, I liked, I liked, uh, you know, brain for gone in words a lot. I feel like they took their time and made a great video. Um, what do you believe in was a really good one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Let's see. I can name just a few. Um, like later on, I love film and the Carl Sturgis videos and killer boots, man, those were so good. <laughs> yeah. Leading the blind um you know making our own videos I, I liked our videos a lot yeah uh, the legacy videos Ohio surf and skate videos yeah yeah I, you know watching again like looking back on it um watching like oss legacy three um it's almost crazy to believe that that was the same being filmed at the same time as like brain fear gone um yeah. Cause the skating in OSS three, I feel like was such a higher, like, I feel like everyone in legacy three was on a brain fear gone, but like Omar, yeah, he was in brain fear gone, but like, I feel like any of them could have had a section in that video and just were for Dayton skaters. Like we're kind of, a, I felt like above the mark of normal at that time. They were very good, especially considering some of like the, you know, Ohio skating limitations that we had of, yeah. like the world's chunkiest sidewalks and you know like rails that were just made of you know 150 percent rust yeah. and like you know just the obstacles we had with seasons yeah. they were so good not being able to skate the, the entire winter unless you shoveled everything like to think about how good they were um just on kind of the global spectrum of skaters like at the time yeah Omar and then Strebel with his like they kind of had like their unique it's funny like their all their songs were like Bone Thugs and <laughs> what I liked about Bone Thugs were like every member had like their unique style and twist yeah. on everything and like that's what the Dayton skaters were <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah they were all um really good you know of course Omar was on Mind Game Ben came up eventually got put on Mind Game um yeah. but yeah like looking at it you know even today like it's not a kind of skating that i get into a lot but like even what um like ryan benner and that group of people do today like is still it still kind of pushed the envelope of where skating is today i feel like and you can see things that they were doing that i i personally always like that's weird but like now it's kind of mainstream the way that they skate and it's incorporated into everything so yeah. it's just something about dayton ohio i don't know it, yeah i mean the new skating i still think it's weird <laughs> <laughs> i don't know um you know i guess i'm on what team josh petty or something like that yeah yeah i, I don't know I'm trying, to, I'm trying to act like i know the, the what's going on in the world right now with skating but like i do miss i miss the big hammers and stunts a lot i wish there was more of it but um it's also really weird to think about how much risk everyone put um yep. that that early 2000s time people were just going crazy <laughs> like yeah. crazy for, and for a sport that wouldn't you know very it rewarded very few and yeah. so many put so much risk on on the line with some of these tricks that that really doesn't make sense either when i think back on it but it was fun to watch yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's it's weird to think about that era um, and then skating like in the the risk versus the reward because 
it's not like people were making a ton of money from rollerblading at that point in time. Um, yeah. Yeah, skateboarding, you can definitely cash in on, on skateboarding, but um, yeah. yeah, it's weird. Like even Alex Broskow, I was watching yesterday, Alex Broskow, um, his section from like KFC two or three, maybe. Um, and just like how every, I think it's three and how like crazy, everything's like a huge hammer. And then I was yeah. watching this other video um, called originals. And like in that one, he barely hits, like he maybe hits a handrail with more than 10 stairs, like maybe once in the entire section. Mm -hmm. Weird. Uh, I think that was always kind of um, something that like we were always compared to skateboarding and oh. I liked, I think some of the hammers and the reasons why I like, aside from just like involved tricks, I think what was great about a lot of those is it separated us from some of the other sports. Yeah. Uh, to see, you know, later um, Roscow clips, he does some insanely technical stuff, but it's on a rail that you would see a skateboarder sessioning, like, you know, shorter kind of stair rail. I always felt like, um, you know, it was hard to compete on the same spots, but there were so many things that rollerbladers could do that skateboarders couldn't and spots that would never be a possibility for a skateboarder. And, you know, I always thought it was cool to differentiate ourselves and skate stuff like that. That's, you know, totally unique. Only rollerbladers could hit that spot. And oh. I always thought that was a, you know, a better way to stand out. And um, but, you know, I think the appreciation of some of those hammers um, maybe got lost. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I, even watching, like, Aaron Feinberg on his Jump Street interview, I don't know if you saw that, but he was talking yeah. about, you know, um, why he doesn't really rollerblade much today. And he skateboards and said, you know, as he's talking, he's like, you know, I go out and I rollerblade. I'm like, I want to do big stuff. And, like, my body can't <laughs> do it anymore. And, like. You know, yeah. it's like, so I can just get on a skateboard and just do something little and, you know, whatever, because that's apparently not fun to him to rollerblade at that small level. And, um, yeah. But Aaron Feinberg, like, is the definition of hammer when it comes to yeah, the <laughs> best. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Which, funny I mean, enough, his section just came on behind you. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, so before we get into this uh, little section, I'm going to have you watch and give some commentary on. Is there anything you learn from skating that you feel like you still use today or just lessons that you feel like are kind of part of your life? Yeah. I mean, a lot of things, but, um, all the creative stuff, you know, yeah. understanding, um, we, we would look at magazines and videos all the time, trying to figure out the best angle and the best photo spot, like how to make, how to frame a photo, just the composition, you know, I got from skating and, how to make you know it look a certain way with with the styles and um the music we ch chose for videos like all of that creative direction i'm and now in, in my job i just design websites and i do creative um tasks for all different companies and you know i feel like i pull a lot of that uh analyzing and trying to understand people and find their brand and their voice and stuff like that I get a lot of that from my days of skating and and trying to analyze skaters and you know their styles and all that. Yeah. Um, you know, and then there was such a huge benefit I think as kids for us to just travel around and be in all the different cities and meeting all the different people, understanding all the different personality types and I felt like it was such an eclectic group of people that we knew and we met and sometimes we were hanging out with very wealthy kids that skated and living in, you know, their worlds and stuff like that and getting along with um, their friends and then some that were just, you know, horribly, you know, a lot of poverty and a terrible life, you know, home situations and stuff like that. But it didn't really matter when we were skating, everyone was equal and, and we all got along. And, you know, I think just those experiences meeting, I, I don't think that happens to a lot of kids they get exposure to all the different types of uh, personalities and people out there. And, um, you know, and I think just um, we were pretty brave and just getting in the car and driving across the state to city we didn't know or 
to Florida or California or wherever we wanted to go. We just yeah. hopped in a car and just said, okay, let's just do it. And yep. met people, skated, you know, I think those experiences and they taught us a lot. And I think we learned a lot from that uh, right. outside of a, a normal kid's upbringing. Those types of situations don't really happen. Yeah. That's so true. Um, like you said, you just, you just meet so many people from, all aspects you know all ages anywhere and again the our parents supporting us um one thing that sticks out to me i don't know if you'll remember this but like having parents that let us one day randomly i don't know it was late at night drive to louisville kentucky um skate all night long literally sleep in our cars underneath a bridge just uh-huh. somewhere downtown wake up <laughs> skate a few more hours and drive home like no cell like i think maybe two or three people had cell phones like no hotel room like we were not even 18 i don't think like and you know yeah we i remember getting in the car to sleep and it was like 4 30 or 5 in the morning like it was like sun was about to come up yeah and it was freezing cold so like we didn't even turn off the car <laughs> yeah it just let the car run <laughs> yeah and uh yeah that was fun that night down in um at the skate park and then we skated around the city i think we ended up at like a, a white castle at two or three in the morning downtown yeah yeah <laughs> random <laughs> random things all right cool before i have you do shout outs i'm gonna have you watch a section from a video real quick i'm having you watch um the introduction to justify disobedience the <laughs> reason is because you edited this thing and i remember when you um, edited this and we, when you first showed me and then we premiered it, I feel like it was kind of the turning point of what could be done in videos for us. Cause the way that you did it, like, you know, especially at that time, the work um, to be put into what you did here and I'd love to hear a little bit about that. And then, um, you know, any memories that it jogs or anything like that, just because again, I, I feel like you editing this took our, our um, creativity to a new level. <laughs> all right oh, man. yeah this video yeah i remember we had the uh was this the premiere at my house or was this yes. the first one okay yep this was the premiere at your house where we sold copies i still have the silver copy if you, i don't know if you remember i colored <laughs> with a mark silver marker for the premiere copy i've still got that that's um, right VHS tapes special yeah. edition all silver Yeah, but I remember like you and I, um, we we created, you know, a bunch of copies of the video. We made covers for it. We bought like little cases, like legit did it, sold these videos, put up flyers, had a premiere, like. Yeah, this was the first video that um, felt like it could be, you know, it felt like a big step ahead from what we had done before. And I remember just right off the bat using Adobe Premiere to do it and learning how to use that program specifically for, honestly, for this intro, yeah. <laughs> but you know, for the video in general. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Any any commentary you got as it goes, share it. All right. So finding music back then, I remember, was not as easy as it would be today. Um, so this one's using it's like some Lincoln Park. Um, remix or i don't know some special edition of their song yeah i remember starting out black and white i wanted it to be all black and white in the beginning as the music kind of came in and then show us and our obstacles so it was a lot of falling and the cop scene and it was you know uh things that kind of hold us down yeah in the black and white and then once we get to uh, i think it ends coming up here with a no skating sign yep i remember this so well <laughs> and uh oh, that's up in van wert yeah yeah so you know the run-ins with the security falling all that stuff being told we couldn't do it yeah. and then the no skating sign and with the music it kind of flickers to color right as you do a fast slide on a drop rail and i feel like right when this music hit and all these tricks 
came in, I, it felt like fast and like the clips we had gathered were pretty good. If you look at the video prior to this and, uh, you know, defeating probability to and watch this one, we got much better really quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was like a whole new level. And people, so we started getting, you know, Mike Callahan started skating with us, uh, Zane, yeah. more regularly, Matt. To skate with better people. And I feel like we gathered some clips that wow. were actually like some legitimate handrail tricks. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh, <laughs> El Dorado Rail. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these were, these were such good tricks at the time, you know. It's actually kind of crazy how often there is snow on the ground <laughs> during these clips. <laughs> I forget how long it took us to film this one. I feel like we turned this one around pretty fast after defeating Improbability. Yeah, I felt like we were kind of like a seasonal video release. Like it, yeah. it would be like a summer video and then a winter video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we would turn them pretty fast. I always loved that rail, even though I had a terrible run up. Yeah. I remember when you guys met Ben, like I was still like in the um, bed, couldn't walk, but I remember you guys coming and being like, we skated with Ben Schwab. <laughs> we just became <laughs> part of the crew. Yeah. I remember my brother and Lori making fun of us because none of us could say Ben. We always said Ben Schwab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Dustin. Oh, man. I feel like Matt definitely helped us to, like, step up our, our level, too, when he came in at that time. I feel like it was a good turning point. Yeah. Matt was really good, and Matt always, you know, made sure we were skating. <laughs> yeah. Like, he was always down to skate. Um, I remember this video. I just rewatched it when you uploaded it. And I don't remember doing so many negatives. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a, it must have been a phase. I remember so, this clip right here with all the faces, like how cool that was. <laughs> this is really hard quality to watch. Yeah. <laughs> but night bleeding. The Wilmington Courthouse. <laughs> I like that ledge a lot too. That was fun. Yeah, I remember going there a lot. The hospital. So, huh. This was after Travis broke his arm, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he broke it filming Defeating Improbability. Yeah. And then that kink rail, I remember that seeming like such a big rail. Justified disobedience. Always had the fanciest names. Yeah, they were always like um, the whatever it's called, like defeating improbability, justified yeah. disobedience. Like, the, <laughs> How many syllables can we get into two words? <laughs> yeah. That's a great yeah. name. Yeah, so I, I don't know. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, like, I'll never forget those good times of, you know, from designing shirts for prosperity um, to selling them, like, you know, you setting up the website and, you know, we would make the designs and your dad getting us like the huge order of shirts. Um, yeah, I remember when those shirts arrived and we were like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, they're just like. And then we went to Detroit. My brother drove us up there for IMYTA. Yeah. Dude, that was so fun. Yeah. I you think. Know, that was like the first, um, like we, we saw some pros at Surf and Skate, but I feel like that, uh, that trip to IMYTA was the first time we got to see like, like legit street skating. And, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, got to see all of our favorite skaters. Yeah. Chris Haffey did the Roy out a huge 540 on that thing, which still Dang. boggles my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. Real quick, I feel like I got to ask you this because you just triggered my memory. Do you remember Fad T? <laughs> yeah, I do. I don't like it though. <laughs> yeah, friends against driving Travis. I don't know why we ever 
did that. <laughs> I don't know. We were, we were trying to, we were, I don't know. We were trying to be helpful. And, yeah. you know, it was just kind of a dick way to do it. Or like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't think we thought about the other point of view. <laughs> yeah. That was just like, you know, we had this friend that we loved and we wouldn't drive. Yeah. And we wanted him to drive himself. But, um, I don't know. I, and it wasn't very sensitive and I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like it now. And I think back on it, I think, uh, I think a conversation probably would have just been better. <laughs> yeah. Well, th this can be our public official apology to Travis. Travis, we never should have started bad tea. I don't know why yeah. we did that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No clue. Um, cool. Well, do you have any shout outs or last words for anyone in the crew or anyone who might watch this? Yeah, I mean, shout out everyone, everyone in our crew. Um, you know, Garrett, me and him uh, had a lot of good time skating together. And we were, I think there, it felt like there was a lot of sessions where it was just Garrett and I, mm -hmm. and we drive out a lot of places. And, um, you know, so shout out Garrett, uh, Matt, Dustin, Zane, Callahan, <laughs> you, Travis, Josh. Uh, Parker, Teddy. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Teddy. I haven't even thought about him. I need to reach out to him and get him on one of these things. Yeah, he's my neighbor over there in Wilmington. And yeah. come over and session my, my rail at my house a lot. So, yeah. Good times. Yeah. Um, he had that, he had that uh, what was it, a sable car that had yeah. like a spoiler that you could hang on to and sketch pretty yeah. easily. Yeah. <laughs> And then he, I don't know if you remember, he built that pretty cool rail in his yard um, that was like slanted. And um, I remember seeing that a lot, um, especially as, as things like, as everyone started to progress, I went through that phase. I know where I could, I was really scared to go out and skate street a lot with you all because like, I didn't want, you know, I was in court and I didn't want to like go to jail. <laughs> so um, I skated that rail with Teddy and Parker a lot at his house. So you know saying that there's one more memory that i remember was crazy was after your accident and you had the metal hips and you came we skated in dayton at uh um i forget the name of the place but it was like a a theater hall and they had that the white handicap rail but then there was the steep stair on the other side and you grinded the rail and you dropped off and it was like a 10 foot drop and you had your metal hips and we were just like can he do that <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. that was like insane yeah uh, to see you doing that after what you went through in the accident like that was i remember that very vividly yeah oh yeah i remember it took me saying now i remember downtown where there's that and then downtown, um, big it's like the handicap rails yeah. with like four or five rails going yeah yeah I didn't think of it because that clip, I think Ryan Benner has that clip and it was in one of their videos, um, but it's not in any of ours. Uh, yeah, it wasn't like Final Debut or something. Maybe it is. I don't, I don't think so, but I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm missing um, Legacy 4 will not play for me on my DVD player, so I can't rip that one. I can't watch it. Um, I know I have like two or three copies, but it only plays, certain ones will play certain sections of the DVD. Yeah. And the, I can't get either one to play fully. Yeah, I literally, to get at least the Wilmington Friends section, I literally set my phone up and recorded the screen because it was the <laughs> only way. And it will only play, like, that section. And then it'll play a little bit of, like, Ben's section. But for some reason, it won't. Yeah. Legacy 4 won't play. I don't know. Well, ben edited that one. And I remember, so, like, before that, it was Justified Disobedience, which – you know we were kids but i felt like that was the first one we were like we were growing up and we were trying to yeah. be cool and like we didn't want to be like these goofy little kids anymore we wanted to like play you know harder music and dress you know more gangster and however we wanted and then like i remember ben chose outcast hey <laughs> and we were all just like mm. <laughs> <laughs> like we looked like dorks <laughs> yeah i remember that because it did it almost made it feel like oh here's the little kids section of the video like, it's the radio song yeah. <laughs> dude yeah. Yeah. yeah there were some decent tricks and and even that and then 
Um, you, you mentioned Garrett, um, but man, I remember at that time, Garrett got really, really good. Yeah. Like, just next, like next level. I feel like it, you know, if he would have stayed focused on it, like he could have just been whatever. He got really good. Yeah. Yeah. Garrett was great. I know you guys talked about Tyler, how good he was right off the bat. Yeah. That was, that was inspiring to see, you know, people in our immediate crew that were, um, hitting these big tricks and, I think I feel like it was that way with Matt and uh, Let's Chill at Bills. Yep. Like that section, uh, I didn't see Matt kept that one pretty secret. I I edited like the intro, mm -hmm. and maybe one other section in it, but then I didn't really see any footage or any edits until it was done. Yep. And I remember watching Matt's section for the first time in that and just being like, "Whoa, <laughs> what?" <laughs> like yeah. he had all these secret clips that i didn't know about and yep. it was good it was really yeah. good i had and during let's chill at bills i got lucky and matt and i kind of like you were saying with garrett like matt and i had a lot of those like just it'd be just him and i um skating and filming clips and um had a lot of fun and and i felt i feel like my let's chill at bill section like i pushed a lot and i think a lot of it was because i was skating with matt um and he was just like you know let's do something really big. Let's go like jump off a bridge today or <laughs> like, you know, like, something crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. That, that, uh, debut that we had at Serpent Skate for that one was, that was pretty crazy. I, yeah. That was, let's chill bills was, um, the last video before I think we were all like moving to California. Yep. Like very soon after that, we had that, uh, premiere party. Yep. I couldn't believe how many people showed up at the skate park for that. That was so yeah. cool. And my mom was there. And yeah. I, I remember her, you know, being impressed by it all. And yeah. uh, that was awesome. That was really cool. Like, yeah. that was, I, I felt like we kind of goofed off in that, making that video. We had a really good time making it. But um, yeah, just to see like how that premiere, because, you know, a big memory of skating was going to the premiere of Brain for Gone was playing behind me and watching that at Serpent's Gate with Omar and all that. Yeah. Um, you know, that premiere was, we were like the little kids at a premiere, but then right before we left, it was our own premiere and yeah. everyone was there watching it. So it was, yeah. it was a really cool way to kind of, you know, end the Ohio chapter of skating for me and just a uh, nice little end cap and, you know, I think yep. that's what, um, I don't know. I had a good, good memories of that. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Um, we, we definitely were lucky to have the experiences we had skating and where, where it's, I know it's stuck with me, um, to today and, and whatnot, but, um, yeah, I appreciate you walking down skating memory lane with me today. Um, skating memory lane. <laughs> skate <in> memory lane. <laughs> yeah um and we got to get together soon if COVID-19 whenever it goes away like I'm planning to come out to Vegas and I'm bringing my skates so Ian McLeod lives here now does he really yeah I see oh, him skating yeah. Vegas a lot oh really cool yeah um well he'll we'll call him up or something and we'll all um go hit a park and you can bring your Dre Powell's or go buy some new Colt skates um you know? <laughs> yeah might get so, some cold. I might skate my Drake Pals, but yeah. I'll need wrist guards, knee pads, helmet, bodysuit. <laughs> yep. I do every time I skate, wrist guard, knee pads under my um, pants. Like yeah. I, I'm not messing around either. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Well, Boosh, thanks for chatting, and um, I look forward to talking again soon. All right. Sounds good, man. See ya. See ya.